Hello and welcome to Vaccinate India in partnership with Google, a program very close to our hearts. In fact, this program also lies at the center of, of a key message that Google wants to share. The critical need to ensure that millions across India vaccinate. Protect yourselves, your families, your friends. Now, in the course of this program, we'll be sharing basic information with you. The fight is uh, to defeat COVID together. But specifically, we have three areas we intend to focus on. The potential of the new Novavax vaccine, which has shown excellent efficacy and will be available in India. What do we know so far about what's been called the Delta Plus variant of COVID, which has been reported in some parts of India? And the unlockdown process in India and the real concern that a lack of social distancing presently may result in a third wave becoming a reality in a few months. That is a very worrying prospect. But first, since we are essentially trying to spread information, just a reminder on how you can get essential information on Google. If you type any number of keywords linked to Corona or to COVID, you get lots of options. So we've picked coronavirus vaccine registration on Google. And, you know, you've got a whole lot of information. For example, who can get vaccinated now? Everyone 18 and older is eligible. So that's some basic information. But there are also some common questions and answers which we can look at. For example, where, sh uh, for example, can I download uh, a COVID-19 vaccine appointment slip or where should I register for a COVID-19 vaccination? So let's look at the first one first. Where should I just click on this over here? You can register on the COVID portal, schedule your vaccination appointment, click on COVID, get in over there, fill in the entire process. And it's actually quite easy from there. So another question that we're looking at, can I download a COVID-19 vaccine, a vaccine appointment slip? In fact, yes, you can. The appointment slip can be downloaded after the appointment has been scheduled. But there are several other key functions uh, related to COVID which you can actually look at. For example, if we click, click over here, you might actually want to verify a vaccination certificate. This is interesting and may become increasingly a requirement if you travel abroad on a flight when that actually opens up. So if, how would you verify a vaccination certificate? Now, this is so important, the process of verification. Various state governments, for example, even in the case of interstate travel, might want to do this. Once the COVID-19 vaccination is completed, a certificate is used to citizens as a, is given to citizens as a proof of vaccination. The vaccination certificate has a secure QR code to protect it against falsification. The genuineness of the certificate can be authenticated from this portal. Did you know about this? This is fantastic because on your sheet of paper, which actually has uh, your uh, vaccination profile, there is a QR code. You can have that QR code scanned and based on what you see over here, you can actually have that verified. So that's very important and interesting. But let's give you uh, an idea of the overall process that, uh, of vaccination and where we are presently in India. On the 19th of June, the seven-day average is of 31,51,570 uh, people being vaccinated on a daily basis. As we've been mentioning, and we'll say this again, that number is not bad, but it's nowhere close to where we need to be. And that's what the target of this exercise is. It's, it has to be a national goal to step that up a lot more. The total number of vaccine shots given in India, approximately 28 crore. That needs to be up. So there was a big dip, as you can see. But then it started rising, and quite frankly, it needs to shoot up a lot more. Now, where is India at the moment in terms of our vaccination goal? Now, this is absolutely key, and thought we might mark out a couple of details for you. The target is for two doses, two doses for 108 crore citizens in this country. That's what the center says. 108 crore have to be vaccinated, ideally by the end of the year. Now, that does not give us a lot of time. The doses left for people to get two vaccines, 188.3 more are required, right? The doses given so far, 27.7. The current average, 33.57 lakh doses a day. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Required daily doses to meet the year-end target, right? Remember, we are trying to get this done by the end of December, 97. 0.08 lakh doses a day. Where are we right now? Remember, 33.57. So from 33.57, we need to get to 97.08. That's based 
on two factors. Number one, the availability of the vaccines, and number two, an incredible uh, uptick in the vaccination process. So therefore, bottom line, what is the time situation? The time it will take to vaccinate all adults at the current average rate is 18 months. That's not good enough by any means. We need to improve that so that we can get to the target of 108 crore by the end of the year. And here's a reality check, the days left in 2021, just six months and 10 days. But we aren't going to meet that target at this stage. At this rate, we are going to uh, be needing 18 months. Now, these are the vaccines that we're actually looking at. On this program, uh, we're going to be looking at Novavax. But these are a couple of important vaccines uh, that um, are going to be entering the market in sizable numbers. Some of them already have. So let's talk um, a couple of key issues over here that we are looking at. Firstly, let's start with the new vaccine on the block, Novavax. What is the effectiveness of Novavax? Because that is a key issue over here. The more effective the vaccine, the safer we are. We're joined by Dr. Jalil Parker, Dr. Olok Roy, and Dr. Shahid Jamil. I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us. Dr. Roy, let me come to you first. In a few months from now, the, uh, we should have a new vaccine, and it should be manufactured in, last, in large numbers. The efficacy is 90% is what we are being told. What does that mean for India in the fight against COVID? See, the, if we have uh, another vaccine available, that means the shortage of vaccine, as we know that at this point of time, there are not enough vaccines from Covaxin or uh, Serum Institute that is COVID shield. So third vaccine entering in uh, probably third uh, quad, uh, third uh, financial year, third part of the financial year of this year will add sufficiently to our strength to vaccinate more people. And as we know that this is a recombinant nanoparticle vaccine technology, which probably has uh, accumulated all the variants together and created a vaccine, would certainly be very useful. And it would not only provide the numbers, it will also provide the safety against the new uh, variant, which we are expected to get, uh, or we are getting uh, as per the second wave and not third wave we are expecting. So this new vaccine will, will certainly be of much use. Okay. Dr. Parker, a lot of people would uh, want to know about whether they can choose a COVID-19 vaccine since there'd be many in the market. A lot of people are still not vaccinated, even with a single dose. What is your advice to them? Hello, are you asking me? Yep, go ahead, sir. Oh, <clears throat> see, <clears throat> anybody can choose any vaccine, and I don't think there should be any curtailment or, uh, you know, uh, uh, not being given the permission to choose. More the vaccines, the better it is. The earlier we all will get vaccinated. Uh, and uh, the thing that we are talking about wave after wave, I think we'll be able to control that. I want to make a little uh, slight uh, deviation and clarification, if you will permit me. See, when we are talking about waves, we all have to understand that the first wave came in, we had the lockdown, and then we opened up, six months passed by, and everything was very much under control. Unfortunately, our vaccination was, drive was not to that great extent as was expected and that rapidly. Having understood uh, the uh, the population that we are uh, handling. Right. However, if you come, if you see the second wave also has come in after six months. And again, there was a lockdown and again, we are going to slowly open up. So now when we are talking about the third wave, it's again the same thing. So my request to everybody, every Indian citizen is to be responsible needs to Absolutely get vaccinated, so. needs to be, uh, you know, following the uh, procedures of uh, containment or isolation or whatever, because we have to help our government to see to it that we, we have to help each other, much quite frankly. Yes, I mean, absolutely. Otherwise, it's a lost A cause. Absolutely. But, All right. Sir, but one second, Dr. Parker. I, caveat, I, sir. Sir, uh, I just sir. need to quickly move on to my other panelists as well. Yeah. I wanted to actually focus a little bit uh, on what we know so far on this Delta Plus variant. Uh, Dr. Jamil, what do we know so far? Uh, is this likely to be the basis of a third wave? 
Well, Vishnu, at this point, it is difficult to say that. Uh, but let me also add that the Delta variant, as we know today, its precursor, uh, which was B1617, was first seen in India in December. And that really caused a lot of trouble to us in April and May. Uh, the new variant, the Delta Plus variant, only seven sequences are available in the public domain from India. A total of 154 sequences are available from the world. It is at a very low level, less than 0.5% of sequences in India. But then it has the potential to get bad. Uh, we don't know whether it is likely to be more infectious. But since the background of this is the same as Delta, I don't anticipate that it's going to be any less infectious than Delta. Uh, but it has an additional mutation that has the potential to evade the existing immunity even better than Delta. So oh, yes, oh, it's a matter of Could you tell us a little bit about that, sir? That's what I meant to ask you about. Uh, yeah. Dr. Jamil, what is the new mutation about? Is it again in the spike cell which governs it transmissibility? The, it is in the spike, it is in the receptor binding domain of spike and it is one of the key mutations that is already seen in the beta variant or the South African variant. Uh, and we know that the South African variant uh, and the Brazil variant, I'm sorry I'm using the wrong nomenclature here. But, but, but go ahead, yes. Eta and the, and the gamma, uh, you know, they have evaded pre-existing antibody and vaccine-related antibody the best. Uh, so we should be concerned about. Yep. All right, uh, Dr. Roy, is it your uh, is it your concern that you know? I mean, when we talk about symptoms of COVID, uh, we need to be doubly alert about the new variants and perhaps even this Delta variant, which might have different symptoms? Is that a possibility at all? Of course. The, uh, what we have observed as per the first wave and second wave, in first wave, the disease was very well ordained. We knew every step of the disease. This is what will happen on day one, this will happen on day two, this will happen on day five, nine, eleven, and nineteen. It was very well orchestrated move of a virus. We knew that once we have discharged the patient, He's not going to come back with the viral infection, a continued viral infection, which never happened in the first wave. In second wave, we discharged a patient who from our side was normal. He came back after six weeks with this another cytokine storm, another uh, infection became serious, put him on ECMO and he died. So we have seen so many variants in our IC today. We have got uh, uh, people whose immunity level is absolutely zero. Right. They are like... Uh, COVID-induced AIDS uh, effect, where there's absolutely no immunity. So this time, the, the symptoms and the progression of disease is so varied. If this is the case, and as they say now, that the new uh, Delta Plus variant, which uh, my uh, colleague had just now expressed, right, if Delta this Plus. one, uh, the monoclonal antibodies, probably will not be effective against this Delta Plus variant. That means we are looking at a serious infection if it gets in and the symptoms will go all over the place. We are not too sure that what we are going to face this time in third wave. Dr. Jamil, why won't monoclonal um, treatment potentially work against this Delta Plus variant? Because the mutation that has taken place is the site where these monoclonal antibodies bind. And if, a, if that site has been changed, then the antibodies don't bind very really. Okay. So that's why these therapeutic antibodies are not that effective in the Delta Plus way. Dr. Parker, uh, you know, the pace of mutations that we are seeing in, in COVID, it's very, very fast. Uh, is this something to be expected? I know that all of you experts have said that a virus will mutate. It is a matter of time. Um, and, you know, we need to keep an eye out on that. But the pace of mutations, we are hardly done with the Delta variant that you've got a Delta plus now. Is this space of mutations worrying you? Uh, it's not only just the uh, pace of the uh, uh, virus mutating, but it is uh, 
also what is worrisome and bothersome for me is that we have all had been discussing breaking our heads over you know all the possible evidence uh, uh, by the researchers as well as by the clinical practitioners that we are still unable to come to a consensus of what is the treatment of COVID. That is very worrisome for me. When I was talking to you about uh, uh, a little deviation was, because every time when we are going to have these lockups after lockups, you know, our economy is in shambles. And when the economy is shambles, we will not be able to come back the way we would like our country to come back. And that is the reason why I was saying that we all have to move forward, come forward, help our, uh, the, the governments too, so that, you know, we are able to control over this COVID-19. It is really worrisome. We don't know what we are going to tell the patients or nor the relatives, because still today we have flip-flopped every one of us, including ourselves. I don't, sure. I don't want to talk about others. I'm talking about myself and I'm talking about everyone around the world. We have yeah. uh, stopped remdesivir, we have stopped tocilizumab, we have uh, stopped plasma. Now we have come with cocktail, the steroids, which caused a lot of damage. And then you also have the uh, shortage of oxygen where we given, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 where we given, sure. uh, we had to supply, so we supplied the industrial No, we are oxygen. absolutely, we are learning on the move and we, and you know, we are questioning okay. ourselves constantly. I need to take a short break at this stage. I'll be right back. Do stay tuned to this very special program where we are looking at uh, encouraging people to vaccinate and also trying to understand about key aspects of what is a learning experience for all of us. All right, well, we're running short on time on this program. I just wanted to get a, a, you know, a last quick comment uh, from uh, from Dr. Um, Jamil on, you know, or, or in fact, why don't we go across to Dr. Roy on the key aspect of where we are now, the need to prevent, to protect. Um, so people are in a bit of a lull. They believe that, you know, things are better now. The numbers in India have gone down. Who knows about any third wave? If it comes, it'll come. Most likely it won't. We'll all be vaccinated. We are heading towards herd immunity, etc., etc. How is it so important to, to just keep give that constant message that we are nowhere there and that, you know, we need to prevent the spread of the vaccine by masking up, social distancing and all of that, quite apart from vaccination. Uh, Mr. Vishnu, the only way this country will get saved is by vaccination. There's no doubt about that. The role of media and government is very, very critical. We need to constantly, we need your help. We need everybody's help who can influence social influencers, media, and every one of us talk only in one language, that vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. We need more vaccination. We need uh, more uh, government to vaccinate. We need more private hospitals to vaccinate. There's only one way we can save this pandemic. And as we have seen, the civil obedience, when it comes to social behavior, especially the masking, is just not there. No one thinks, no one bothers in this country, especially the people, at large that they need to mask and maintain social distancing. It's not only with the rural folks, yep. it's with the educated people also. If there are enough people on the street, there are enough people in the marriage parties, there are enough people in social functions without masks. So I think uh, the only way we can really prevent it if we love our country is vaccinate and please help us through media. All right, I'd like to thank all of you very much for, uh, for, for joining us. It's so frightening to think that we've spent a year talking about this and there is yet another mutation which at this rate might end up being the center of our conversations a few months later, along with the third wave. How much longer will this go? We just have to keep vaccinating. I'd like to thank all our panelists very much for joining us.